In this video, we're going to investigate how to find the arc length of a hypocycloid. In other words, how to find the perimeter. But before we do that, we have to go back to the definition and the derivation of the arc length formula. As you recall, in rectangular coordinates, the arc length was derived from the distance formula. But the thing that we sometimes skip over, and I am just as guilty, is this little part of that definition, is that it has to be a rectifiable curve in order to have a finite arc length. And a sufficient condition for it to be rectifiable is that the derivative has to be continuous on the given interval. So the function has to be continuously differentiable and its graph has to be a smooth curve. Now why does it have to be differentiable? Well, if you go back to the formula here, that's the derivative. If the derivative is undefined at some point along the interval from A to B, then we can't integrate something that's undefined. So what is a smooth curve? Well, for parametric equations, you have a curve represented by our two parametric equations. And it's smooth if our derivatives are continuous on some interval and not simultaneously zero. Now that's the part I want to key in. Why is that? Well, on our arc length that we had before, it was the integral of the square root of 1 plus dy dx squared with respect to x. In parametric, what is dy dx? It's dy dt divided by dx dt. If these two derivatives were simultaneously 0, we would have 0 over 0, which of course is undefined. And then we would have an integral in terms of something that's undefined, which of course you cannot do. So how can we approach this problem if we have derivatives that are simultaneously zero? Well, I'm going to keep going. So our derivatives have to be continuous on some given interval, not simultaneously zero, except possibly at the endpoints of that interval. Then we could do a piecewise smooth curve and then it's just smooth on some sub-interval of that given interval. So when we look at our hypocycloid and we have the interval from 0 to 2 pi, we have to concern ourselves with what happens at some given values. Are our derivatives simultaneously 0? So here is our hypocycloid from 0 to 2 pi. It traces out here, 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 and here going from 0 to 2 pi. Hopefully you can see that this is not going to be a smooth curve. We have some cusps along the way and therefore your derivative is going to be undefined at different point at different places between 0 and 2 pi. Let's look at that. In order to find the arc length in general, we would have to find dx dt and square it and dy dt and square it. Then take that integral with respect to t. Okay, so looking at the interval between 0 and 2 pi, Let's see if our derivatives are defined along that interval and they are not simultaneously zero. dx dt, right? dy dt. Would these two derivatives be simultaneously zero anywhere along zero to two pi? Well, let's see. At pi over two, what would be that derivative? So if I evaluate dx dt at pi over 2, I would get okay, the cosine of pi over 2 is 0 and the sine is 1. 
All right, so that's zero. What about here? Well, the sine is one and the cosine is zero, so I get zero again. So at pi over two, they are simultaneously zero, which means I cannot integrate across that. So that's when we're going to go back to we can have a piecewise smooth curve when it is smooth on some sub-interval. Also, not include endpoints. Well, not endpoint, 0 to 2 pi, but we've got to get to 0 to 2 pi. So what could we do? We could go from 0 to pi over 2, which would get us from here to here. And if we multiply this length times 4, that would give us the whole perimeter. So when finding the perimeter of a hypocycloid, you cannot go from 0 to 2 pi because, again, the derivatives are simultaneously equal to 0 at different values, not only at pi over 2, but at pi and 3 pi over 2 and 0. Those are all places where those derivatives would be simultaneously 0. So our other way is to use symmetry and take one part of the cycloid and multiply it by 4.